مرحبا و اهلا و سهلا بكم في مقابلة القيادة و الاستهار. Welcome, uh, good morning and welcome to Think and Thrive. My name is Kate and today I have the incredible opportunity to interview Ms. Leila Mostafa Abdullatif, who is the Director General of EWSD, WWF. Ms. Leila, thank you so much for joining us. Are you ready to begin? I am. Thank you, Kate. And it's an incredible opportunity for me. So thanks for having me. All right. I'm very excited. So what are your top five goals in life? My top five goals? Well, I think definitely a good person, uh, a good mom, a good wife, a good friend. To explore the world is really important. I want to get out everywhere and see every single country there is, inshallah. Uh, to be a good leader that really strives towards impact, impact with our youth, impact on the ground, really saving the planet. Um, what am I on? Number five? Yes. <laughs> okay. So a special one, which is maybe just unique to me, but I have a bucket list item where I really want to tag a great white shark Ooh. for science-based research. So that's, that's one of my bucket cool. list things. Which, which ocean do you want to tag the shark in? Wherever, as long okay. as, as, I long have as the that shark. opportunity. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. So we talked a little bit about it earlier, but I'm currently in year nine, which means I'm looking at GCSE options and sort of things that are gonna uh, decide my career yeah. path. But what, if someone was looking to go into your field as an environmentalist, what should they look into and what options did you pick when you were at this age? Well, thanks, Kate. I think it's, it depends. So I went into environmental biology. So all my GCSEs were around the sciences, so the biology, physics, uh, chemistry. Um, and then I went and I studied environmental biology in university. However, in our organization, in WWF, you've got creative designers, you've got engineers, you've got finance people, you have videographers, you have the scientists, you've got communication experts. So it really, you can study anything you really are interested in, as long as, uh, again, it's something you're passionate about, and then you can easily move into the field. That's very cool. And you're, what is, I know I talked about how you're director general, but what does that look like for you at WWF? Uh, my days are quite busy, <laughs> but always fun. Uh, I think as long as you're passionate about what you're doing and what you want to do, then work becomes fun. And that's what's really important. So for me, my days are very much meeting with different stakeholders, with the government, with our youth, with our businesses to really get them to implement proper conservation on the ground and implement it innovatively. And that's where the fun stuff happens. So it's the magic sauce. How can you achieve impact, but do it really creatively and do it in a way where you're not just achieving something big from an environmental perspective, but you're achieving something that's long-term and that people agree with and is sustainable. Yeah, that's really cool. And we can just sort of see the impact already about how Dubai is so open to new initiatives and that how you're trying to in in introducing those as well. So <laughs> uh, sort of continuing to that question, sort of the two-part question, uh, what sort of drove you to pursue a career in sort of wildlife and conservation? So I think that started at a very young age. So at a very young age, I was always trying to get out in nature and connecting with nature with my parents and, and my brother and my friends. It was always camping out somewhere or going on a boat fishing. And that's really tied back to my Emirati fishing roots. So my dad would always take us out to sea and we would use these traditional fishing rods and, and be out there. But the point of that was we learned to catch what was sustainable and what was our meal for the day. So we'd use our hands, catch the fish, and that we would eat fully, and that was our meal for the day. And that kind of inspired me to go down this route of, hey, I actually like this area, and I'm starting to become really passionate about it. How can I go out there and make a true impact for the UAE, for the world, and really create something that I'm proud to leave my kids with? That's really cool, and you're it. doing so well already, just, just from what I've read and how, how you just handle yourself and it's very very cool to see uh, so you talked about your parents and how they sort of impacted you and your you know love for nature and conservation so leading on to that what is your what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given 
So be passionate about what you're doing. Um, take risks mindfully, which means even if you're worried about something and it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable when it comes to choosing your, your studies for school and you think, okay, I want to go into this field, but maybe I'm not as good in that area, still go ahead and try it and take that risk because you surprise yourself on what your capabilities actually are. And what's so important is when you find something you're really passionate about, you put all of your effort and energy into it. Because when it comes to, to eventually uh, being in a job and working towards something, you need to love it. And that's how you're going to get real impact. You have to love what you're doing and truly, truly love what you're doing. Definitely, for sure. That's, that's, that's good advice. Thank you. Um, so now we move on to sort of our rapid fire round with our rapid fire okay, questions. Cool. I have 11 questions for you. Okay. So it sort of gets more complicated, I guess, as it goes down. So what's your favorite animal? Shark. Ooh, with the white shark tag. Yeah. Okay. Mountains or beaches? Beaches? Beaches. Who's your idol? Hmm. Um, honestly, honestly. From my heart, it might sound a little bit cliche, but honestly, Sheikh Zayed, our late father. That's beautiful. Uh, what's your favorite form of social media? Instagram. Favorite movie? Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh, I like that one. <laughs> uh, if you had to pick an alternate career, which one would you pick? <laughs> uh, I, I think I'd, an adventurer, photographer Ooh. of wildlife. That's really cool. Go down that like, route. Yeah. Um, what's your daily dose of motivation? Mm, well, my kids. <laughs> kids my are kids. great. They're very inspiring. They can be. Sometimes yeah. they're stressful. But so you kids. mentioned you have pets. Just Which pets do you have? So I have a German Shepherd. I have a hamster, two hamsters, mm -hmm. and I have birds. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Pets are really cool. They're, they're fun to interact with yeah. sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> um, rain or snow? Rain. Favorite food? Sushi. Mm. Favorite event that you've attended, either as a speaker or just as an attendee? So yesterday was pretty cool because I met with Prince William for Ooh. the first time, His Royal Highness. So that was amazing. And that was an event at Expo where they were trying to talk about the importance of conserving wildlife and preventing the trade of animals that is not sustainable and uh, uh, healthy. That's very cool. Yeah. I'd like to meet Prince William. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> it's super cool. Very nice. So, all right, rapid fire. Right. You're, you're good. That was, that was very, very good. Um, so I recently read about the ecotourism uh, initiative that you recently introduced. It encourages people to help uh, help nature and sort of help nature to thrive and also to honor the UAE's heritage. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So this is one of my baby projects that I'm so excited about. So it's called the Leaders of Change. And it's a platform that we recently started because I kept getting calls from different people saying, you know what, your job is so cool and we want to be involved in the work that you're doing and we want to be out there tagging turtles and <laughs> you know, going to all of these remote locations and hiking and camera trapping. How do we do that? So I sat down with my team and I said, right, we're going to make this work. We're going to create something that's going to be open to everybody. So all of our youth, all of our individuals across the UAE, where they can actually be out there in the field with us. So we created a program called Leaders of Change. And with Leaders of Change, what it is, is you can sign up with your families. So it's an annual program where you have the opportunity to come out every single weekend with us and our team. So we're either camera trapping and hiking in the mountains, or in the case of this ecotourism project, we're working with the local farmers in Fajera, where we're building up ecotourism trails in their areas in Al Bitna, or we're regenerating the traditional felage and the irrigation system. So we have all of the public with us out there mixing the cement, putting the blocks of bricks and helping us build the trails together as a community. So that's we're so, super excited about it. That's very exciting. And I love how innovative each of your ideas are. It's, it's not something that you've heard before. That's what makes the job fun. <laughs> yeah, You're able to right. yeah. take risks and come up with cool yeah, ideas. And it's, and it's really, it's, it's truly inspiring. Um, so sort of about 
the public is that that kind of thing. How have you seen environmentalists sort of take the lead over the last year, uh, specifically in the UAE? So I think it's kind of, it's been a global trend where because of COVID, with all of us stuck in our houses and, and, and separated from one another, we've had a time to really stop and listen and look outside and, and be aware of our surroundings. So we've had a chance to really observe nature and be inspired by it and hear, you know, the bird songs in the garden and hear the crickets out at night. And that has made us all sort of almost become environmentalists in one way because we understand now how important it is and how connected we are to nature. And I think it's not about environmentalists necessarily like David Attenborough or, or you know, Greta Thunberg, who are amazing, but it's environmentalists like you and I. So all of us here in the room, we've started to make small changes, even by noticing nature and understanding that we all have a role to play in nature. And that has been a trend in the UAE. And we've seen a lot more youth have been interested in getting involved in the work on the ground and they want to share their voices and talk about what's important and what solutions to come up with uh, to save our planet. So that's been interesting. That's very cool. Yeah, definitely the UAE has certainly increased in its almost awareness of nature and how to, how to look after that. Thank you for that insight. Uh, so I know that we have some eco-enthusiasts in the audience. Uh, so specifically, they're very excited to be here. Um, so I just want to know what society's role and also individually what our role can be, like some small but practical advice that we can use to make it you know, more sustainable and help to you know, conserve the environment. Well, I think, first of all, be aware of what the threats are to the environment and that a lot of that is around our plastic consumption. It's around our consumption in general. So make sure we're not, uh, you know, necessarily overdoing it with buying a lot of things that are unsustainable. But also there's so many opportunities now, not only with our organization, but out there with other organizations where you can get involved in the field. Um, we're running a, a program, which I just mentioned to your principal called Nature Champions, which will be an extracurricular activity in schools, which is also an opportunity for those enthusiasts to really get involved and, and go out on field trips and kayak in the mangroves and pick up plastic and think about how do we reuse and uh, recycle those different threats to the environment. That's really exciting and I, I can't wait to see that. I'm sure Regent will uh, definitely take part in that as, as, as soon as we can. And I'm sure our eco-enthusiasts and just our students in general will be very pleased. So, I also read, I did so much reading, um, I read that you're part of the Circular Economy Council. Yes. So what does that mean for the UAE? So the Circular Economy Council is about how do we create a circular economy model for the UAE. Now what that means is instead of, let's look at a mobile phone, right? So some of us uh, hopefully not everybody in the audience mm -hmm. has a mobile phone, but at one point you might get one, right? So instead of um, when you use your iPad, let's use the iPad as an example. So when you have your iPad and your iPad gets broken, a circular economy model means that they, the way they've built your iPad is that they can easily repair it. They can easily, once it is broken, use the raw materials in it and actually make new products out of it. So it doesn't just go to waste. And that means that everything we use, everything we consume, our pens, our pencil cases, all of that is created in a way and packaged in a way that we reduce the amount of waste that's out there and we're able to recycle and reuse those products into new products. So instead of throwing waste out each time, you're actually then moving into a circular model. So the waste goes back into producing a new product. And so with the UAE Circular Economy Council, they're looking at how, what policies do we put in place, what innovations do we put in place to help those companies out there like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Starbucks, come up with solutions so that it's not that you drink your Coca-Cola and it, you throw it into the bin, but, or you drink your plastic water bottle and you throw it into the bin. You're actually being able to then reuse the plastic in that and create a new product out of it. That's really exciting. And I'm, again, I keep saying this, but I'm so excited to see all these initiatives introduced and actually play out. 
as they continue to, you know, help us to almost evolve and continue to get better and better mm -hmm. as a society, but also as a nation. Um, so, do you think, we, we talked a little bit about social media in the rapid fire round, do you think that social media can impact and can help us to be more environmentally friendly? Do you think it has a big role to play? I think it does have a big role to play um, uh, in the sense that once you you are on social media and you're of age to be on social media or you're on social media with your parents and your families, you're really raising awareness about the importance of being environmentally friendly. And that means uh, you're raising awareness about, again, reusing, recycling, not consuming too much. And how do we actually connect more as humans with nature and make sure that we're, we're living effectively? Because the reality, and I, and I say this a lot of the time when people ask me, what is your job? My job is to ensure survival of all of you. So my job is to ensure survival of future generations. And how do I do that? I do that by really advocating about conserving our natural resources. So these are our habitats, our mangroves, our mountains, our beaches, and all of the species, our trees, our turtles, and everything that lives within them. Because if they don't survive, then it affects our survival as humans and, and as a generation because we rely on them for our survival. So this is where it's not just about you know, being green and being environmentally friendly. It's about a new way of life that all of us uh, have to collectively contribute towards. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see just how, how much, just a little bit, how, how far a little goes. So you talked about how your job is to help sort of make sure that organisms and animals and humans, of course, survive uh, into the coming generations. So to link into, into that, from that, could you tell me what the most endangered organisms are in the UAE and how we can help? So there's quite a few of them. Um, so there's the marine turtle, uh, the hawksbill and the green marine turtles are quite endangered in the UAE. There's the dugongs, which are the sea cows, so the manatees that you find in uh, Abu Dhabi waters. And the UAE has the second biggest population of them in the entire world after Australia, which not many people are aware of. Um, there's, of course, our, our trees, our raf tree, our, our national tree. Uh, there's our falcons. So there's multiple different animals that are endangered uh, in the UAE. Our Arabian oryx, that has a beautiful success story as well. So yeah, so you've got quite a lot here that people are not aware of. Thank you for thank you for drawing our awareness. I didn't know that. I didn't know that we had the sea cows here. That's, yeah. that's very interesting. So what can we do to help? What are like obviously like reuse things and all that sort of thing? But is there practical advice that we can like that can play out almost immediately on there the is so we have um, a program within our leaders of change which is all around citizen science and the way that we work with our youth and with the public is we have these biodiversity mapping uh, activations where again we'd like to have our youth help us by using their their mobile phones or their ipads downloading an app called iNaturalist, where wherever they see these different species or animals, they actually take pictures and it helps us create a wider biodiversity map and database for the country. So we know, okay, this is where these species and animals are found. These are where these species are found. And then we work with the government to put in place uh, an action plan of protected areas in the country and ecotourism uh, hotspots. So there are many ways that you can help as citizen science, and we've listed all of those different ways on our, on our website as well. But it's really just actually downloading and helping us as scientists in the, out there, whenever you're out going to the mountain or to the wadis in Frigera, take your iPads and take pictures of what you see and uh, upload them for us because that's super helpful. That's very cool. And it's cool to see how much you love your job, but also how much you love the people who affect your job and how much you love nature. Uh, it, it leads back to what you were saying earlier about just loving your job is, is the, the key. Yeah, 100%. So this is sort of our final question for me, questions, uh, and then we'll close. But um, so as the Director General of WWF, as you said, um, what you talk about sort of on the website and in the, you know, 
autobiographies and things. You talk about successful partnerships that have helped. Could you give us an example of one of those partnerships and the results yeah. that it's had? So we had a super cool project which was ongoing for 10 years, and it was around protecting our marine turtles. Okay. Uh, and with this project, it was in partnership with the government of Abu Dhabi, with the Environment Agency there, with the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, with multiple other NGOs. And what we did, so this is a cool part about the project, is we had to go to these remote locations, so like Butina Island in Abu Dhabi and areas in, in Ras al Khaimah, where our team was out there in boats. And the minute you see, so these turtles are massive, you know, the massive turtles in the water swimming. And the minute you see them, you need to jump into the water, grab the turtle. So you bring it onto the boat in a nice way. You would, we would uh, attach these satellite trackers to the turtles and then put them back into the water nicely. And we can see then, so we would map over the course of six months to a year online, how are they moving? So we could track their migratory routes. So we saw one was going, one of them was called Fatma. So Fatma was swimming to Oman, and then another turtle was called Aisha, and she was swimming to one of the other borders, right? And we tracked their migratory routes and saw where they spent most of their time. So then we worked with the Ministry of Climate Change to say, okay, these are the main nesting sites for the turtles. So this is where they're laying their eggs. These are the sites where they're they're having their, their meals, so their foraging sites, and these are the areas that we need to protect. So we created a, a, a plan of action for turtles, so a turtle action plan, where we designated certain areas as protected areas to make sure that those endangered species were allowed to thrive. And we also worked with partners in Oman, because remember, the turtles don't have borders like us, so they swim into other countries. So it had to be it, had, it required forming a lot of partnerships outside the UAE as well to make sure that they were protected uh, as a whole. But that was a super cool project. And National Geographic came down and, and filmed it. And you can actually check it out if any of you guys are going for spring break to any part of the world. On Emirates Airlines, check out the wild turtles of al Dhafra, And that documents this, this partnership and uh, the footage of, of all the partners out there. So it was super cool. That is really, 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 really fun cool. project. And I'm, I'm sure you helped hundreds of turtles and also hundreds of people be more aware. Um, so partnerships are incredible and we're, we're gonna close, which makes me sad. But before we close, uh, we, we, we know that you have a video that you'd like to play. So as soon as it's ready to play, uh, there's a TV screen to your right. Uh, and then we can just play the video. And we'll take some audience questions. Yeah, so this gives you a little bit of a snapshot of some of the field activities that we've been rolling out. That looks very exciting. I'm going to look into that. I that looks something I would like to do. So now we're going to take audience questions. Do we have a microphone for that? Perfect. Does anyone, just guys, if you, if you have questions, just go ahead and put your hand up. And then I'm sure one of our lovely people will come and question there go for it so you know you've obviously had a lot of projects going on right you've done like ones that lasted for like 10 years and a lot of stuff like that so what was the most challenging one what which one like put a lot that you put a lot of effort into it uh amazing question mm -hmm. each one was extremely challenging and that's what i when i go back to really you need the passion you need the passion mm -hmm. in whatever you choose to do because you will have challenges almost every day but that's what makes it fun, right? Because the challenges makes you take a risk, fail mindfully, and failure is so important. I always preach the importance of failure. Being comfortable with trying something out and failing is one of the most important advices actually I can, I can give you all. Because when you fail and you fail mindfully, you understand what works and what doesn't work and how to change your strategy and how to overcome that challenge. And then you're gonna hit another challenge the next day and you fail again and then you, you get back up and you find the right ingredients for success for each particular project. So everything uh, had a challenge going back to, you know, how partners wanted to be involved or recognized or what was feasible in terms of financial resources to implement a project, but they all come with benefits.
What an incredible answer to a great question. So I see that some of our eco enthusiasts, uh, some of our year sixes have questions. Uh, does anyone else, I think Hasham had a question before we go over to our year sixes. Or we'll go to the year sixes, that works as well. Uh, yes. Okay. I don't, yep. Yeah. Okay. Do you help animals all around the world or just around Dubai? So our office is a representative of WWF, which is the Worldwide Fund for Nature. And they have offices in over 100 countries around the world. So whatever we implement here in the UAE, we link it to the global projects that they've got so that it's not just here, but it's also having impact abroad. That's very cool. So yeah. As you said that your favorite animal was a shark on land, what is your favorite animal? Mm, uh, horses. I love horses. Do you like riding horses? I do. <laughs> Where do you have your nature offices around the world? Um, so our office is here in, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and we have a small field office in Fujairah, but around the world, over a hundred countries. So really many different places uh, in South America, in Europe, in London, okay. and, uh, in the US across Asia Pacific, so in India and Pakistan and Japan and China and Philippines, so really everywhere around the world. All right, I think we're going to take two more questions, one, one more from year six and then one more from year seven. Um, so you said that you have, you've been to UAE and like you've done a lot of projects, so what's the most polluted place in the UAE that you've been to? Ooh, <laughs> nice question. Um, well, it varies because I think what UAE is quite good at is cleaning up their beaches. Uh, and what they do a lot is they try to bring, uh, there's so many different groups out there that are doing beach cleanups and desert cleanups. So although an area might be polluted, it doesn't stay polluted for too long. But usually the most pollution is by the beaches on the coastline because that's where all the plastic builds up from the ocean. Very nice. Thank you. That was very informative. And last one from Sana. What do you think is the most important factor when choosing a career? I think the most important factor when choosing a career is seeing something that you feel that you could have an impact in in the long term. So really looking at, is this something I'm interested in? Is this something I could do in the long run. And, uh, and, and, and again, even with career, if you don't know what you want to do at this point in time, experiment. And don't be afraid to try different things and take risks because that will help you see, okay, this is something I'm not really interested in, but I, now I realize that I want to pursue that element of a career. That's very cool, yes. It, like, I, like you said in the beginning, it's all about passion and loving what you do. Yeah. Guys, those were some really good questions. Uh, and exceptional answers as always. Uh, but these sessions are never long enough. Uh, and so unfortunately we have to close, but I'm so excited to see the practical advice play out as well as the, you know, the, the, the practical advice play out through the community and also just through our school. Uh, I'm sure for everyone when I just thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for, everything, for everything you do. It's not often that somebody gets to interview someone like you. And I, I just feel so privileged and just so, I guess, yeah, privileged and just so honored that I've gotten to do this. So thank you very much. Thank you. And likewise, honestly, this has been so fulfilling for me and for my heart. And you guys have been an excellent audience with amazing questions. And you are unbelievable. So good job. Thank you. Because thank you very much. I <laughs> I could not ask questions as well as you have, so you should be really proud of yourself Thank for, you for going much. out you there. You make it easy. But honestly, guys, uh, it's been such a pleasure, and I'm, I'm so excited to have spent my Friday morning with everybody. <laughs> so Thank That's you. That's all from me, but I think Mr. King has some things to say. Just, uh, just a few things from me. I'm just coming to the, uh, the shot. Um, can we give another big round of applause for Miss <laughs> Leila? <laughs> louder, louder. Can't hear it.
I, oh, great. Even uh, sound back in. Great. Perfect. Uh, I just wanted to add to uh, what Take has already said, but so we're so grateful for you coming to join us today. Um, I know the impact your short time here on these students here is, is huge. Okay, and, and ultimately then the messages that they're taking back to their peers is also the important aspect. So from all of those things, from the leaders of change, the nature, the wild turtles, these are things that we would definitely be engaging with you and the organization to ensure that we do make a difference and we make a difference to um, our planet. Okay, so that as well as we survive and we need to ensure that our animals are conserved and they survive as well. And equally, thank you for mentioning Kate because I... We couldn't have hoped for a, a more transitional, smooth questioning. Kate, you're amazing. And uh, how you just conducted the interview today was, was, was fantastic. So can we give Kate a round of applause as well? Thank you. So it just leaves me just to, uh, we have a small, uh, small gift here to take away with you. One of it is actually our Regent Raptor. Okay. And now I know raptors are no longer on the planet, but you never know where. Uh, when they may come back, but uh, that's our little mascot with a few things in there for you awesome. later. So please, Kate, would you like to give that to me on you. my behalf? And honestly, I'm so excited about today. Thank you so much for this, about today's session. And I look forward to having all of you guys on board. Absolutely, and we will be on board. So now the important thing for us, uh, region is then to take this forward. Okay, use this as the inspiration to continue the great work you're already doing. Our eco warriors, you're already doing. I, I know you had loads of questions. Keep those questions because maybe we can collate those and look at how we can get some of those answers back to you as well. Okay, uh, but uh, finally, thank you once again, Miss Layla. Have a nice big round of applause.